A little bit before nine o'clock this morning, we got to we got called to an area off Hilltop Road in Cape St. Clair. A woman was walking in the woods when she saw what she describes as a 14 to 15 year old white male, dark hair, wearing a camo jacket, who had a handgun in his hand. She asked the kid what he was doing, and he said, oh, I'm just shooting small critters. She goes back to her house. She immediately called 911, but because of the time elapsed, it was about a 10 minute um, gap from the time she spoke to this child to when she actually called 911. Officers saturated the area. One of the officers that was on the perimeter of that area was stopped and he heard a pop. When he heard the pop, a pop, shortly after his back window, windshield, back windshield fell down. Um, it shattered. We have been in the area ever since. We have multiple units out here. Um, detectives have a very strong lead. They are following. They do not believe that right now there is any public safety threat in the area. They are following that lead. Um, we have broken down the perimeter per se. We are asking anybody that lives in the area to please just keep an eye out for first responders. There will be a lot of us still out here right now. Um, but right now we do not think that there is any public safety threat. Detectives are following up on a very good lead right now. Detectives believe they know where he is and that he's not a threat to the public at large, if that makes sense. Can you confirm whether or not um, he's a kid that should have been in school, if he, you know, we know what school he might go to, do you have anything about him? So detectives know who he is, so yeah, they have that information on him. It's not something that we're prepared to give out just yet um, for multiple reasons, um, but right now we're not going to give that info, but detectives do have all of that um, and are following up actively on, on that. What can you tell us about the school? Yes, there's multiple schools nearby, including an elementary school. So we notified the Board of Ed immediately, um, and the Board of Ed took the actions that they took, and you'd have to talk to them about actions that they took. We were also um, in contact with Department of Aging for senior centers and stuff nearby. But again, to comment on their policies, their procedures, you'd have to reach out to them. Was there anyone inside of the car when this happened? And do the police suspect this is on purpose shot, an accidental shot, or does it really matter? So there's a, a lot of questions there. So yes, the officer was in his car. He had his driver's side door open, was sitting there. He was actually eating his breakfast, sitting there while he was looking around. Um, her, here's this pop, here's the window, shatter down. Um, we don't know, there's several things we don't know. We don't know if this um, shot was purposeful. We don't know if it was accidental. We also don't know if it's some type of fluke with the car where the, winch, the back windshield just cracked. Um, you know, stranger things have happened. So they're looking at those three things. Either way, the 15 year old going through the woods shooting critters is still being investigated with this. So there's a lot of good, good questions there, Dave. Is that a limb? Yes, he can't, a 14 or 15 year old can't shoot a handgun in the woods by a school. Can you tell us what kind of gun it was? They, the witness said it was a handgun. As far as what type of gun, we don't, we don't know yet, but it was a handgun. The woman never felt threatened that engaged that I don't know. Um, I know she was comfortable enough to speak with him. Now I don't know if she saw the gun or not. It was more like, hey, what are you doing not in school? And then saw the gun and was like, oh, maybe, I, you know, I don't want to speculate to what her feelings were. Um, but she did confront him and said, what are you doing here? And that's when he said, yeah, I'm just shooting small critters. So the initial shock of being on a call with somebody with a gun and hearing a pop in your window falling down is not a good feeling. Um, said officer immediately took cover um, and started assessing his scene here while calling on the radio saying, hey, look, this is what just happened, which would be what you would expect an officer to do in that situation. Do you have a sense of how many units responded, how large the presence was of law enforcement in that perimeter? It was dozens. I would definitely say dozens from, from multiple agencies. I'm not sure exactly who was here with us. Um, I believe DNR was here, MSP was here, I don't know who else came out, um, but it was definitely a multi-agency response, which is exactly what we want on something like this. So we're very grateful for those agencies to come out and help us get that scene locked down quick. And like I said a few minutes ago, if anybody's just joining, we do not feel that there is a public safety threat right now. Detectives are working on a very good lead. Did he feel it necessary to discharge their firearm? He did not. He did not. Um, and he did not see the suspect. So um, the officer heard the pop. The glass shattered, he got out of his car, took a, a defensive posture behind cover, um, and started assessing his situation to see what was going on as he radioed in. Just as a follow-up, was mm -hmm. there a slug found in the car? Going back to your theory, the window may have cracked. 
So, so no, we don't have a projectile yet. Doesn't mean it's not in there, um, but we are not, um, we're not comfortable right now to say that this vehicle was definitely shot and we're not comfortable enough to say this vehicle was not shot, if that makes sense. We're, all of that is still being actively investigated right now. No, we cannot. No, nope, that's a very good question. So I don't know if you all heard that question. The question was, can we confirm that the handgun that the original um, complaint called in was an actual firearm and not an airsoft or a toy? No, we cannot at this time until we find find him and find that weapon. Correct. We're still very heavily in those areas. Um, one school has SROs, it's a high school. The other one, there's still a lot of police presence in the area. So yes, we will be definitely in the area, um, especially at, at dismissal time to, to ease those those concerns, those, you know, those, those very valid concerns. Is this young person known to police before this That I don't know, that's a very good question. I can, when we do our follow up at some point, I can find that out for you. Sorry, I don't have more answers for you guys, but right now it's still pretty pretty fluid out there. If this is a minor, though, I mean, you likely won't learn an identity, or, or how will this work moving forward? It's going to depend on what charges are filed. So some charges, um, as a minor, can be charged as an adult, and then yes, you would. Um, if it's some charges that the minor cannot be identified, then then right. Um, but we would be able to update you in that, hey, somebody has, you know, we did close this case, somebody has go that way. And with this strong lead that they're following, is this a minor that is um, you know, familiar or police are familiar with this, this person? Yeah, that's what Rachel just asked. I don't know if we're, it's okay, I know it's hard to hear. I don't know if we're familiar with him or not. I know that they are, the detectives are working. They know who he is. Absolutely. So that's great, Pete. So a recap here. Um, we are asking people in the area to just use caution because there is going to be a heavy police presence in the area. We do not believe that there is a threat to the public at large right now, the, the public as a whole. Um, detectives are working a very strong lead as far as who the child was with the handgun in the woods this morning. And detectives are still actively trying to determine if that police vehicle was shot out or if it was some type of ridiculous coincidence and a mechanical malfunction with that vehicle. How will you let us know when you apprehend the suspect? We would update a press release like we always do. Okay, mm -hmm. not, not even a Twitter or just press release for sure? We would do both, yeah. Okay. Yep, absolutely. Did the woman just look weird? Like You're fine. Did the woman say whether or not she saw any dead animals? That I don't know, and I don't know if he was carrying any or any with him. Um, that was just his, his thing was quote unquote, killing small critters. All right, guys, well, thank you, and we will update you when, when I get more. Now that the, there's no potential threat, yep. can we go to the crime scene? They still have a heavy police presence there. You could probably get closer. Um, you could probably get closer. I'm not sure where we left a different way that we came in, where they have that road shut down or not. Um, but, yeah, just for your B-roll and stuff, that should be, should be fine. And do you have an actual main address? That I, maybe I'm late to the park. It's at Hilltop and Blue Ridge was where the original call came from. Is there like a trailhead in that area or something? So there's a, um, it's a, there's a school and then a wooded area. And then on the other side of the wooded area, from my understanding, is like Cape St. Clair Road and that um, business, uh, business, the shopping center with like the Dunkin' Donuts and the, the, um, the Mexican restaurant. I think there's like a supermarket in there too. That backs up to that same, same wooded area. Uh, the area where the officer was when the window cracked was actually off Cape St. St. Clair Road, um, not too far from that shopping center. Okay. All right, guys, thank you very much.